Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a guide on Wamai. A few of you have asked for this and I do play them a fair bit, so I thought why not? So I'm going to give you five simple tips that will make you a better Wamai player. And if this video helps, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Okay, so to begin things, we're going to be going through the loadout first. There's only one gun I really recommend using for Wamai, and that's the MP5K. If you're using the AUG, then you're a freak. Just kidding. But you don't want to be using the AUG over the MP5K, which comes with a 1.5 scope. That'd be very silly. Now, just to note quickly that the 1.5 scope will be gone in year nine season one, but it will be replaced with the ACOG, which is crazy. This gun has little to no recoil and it getting an ACOG is just mental. The last attachment you need for the MP5K is the flash hider. Now, moving on to the secondary for his loadout, I like to use the Kratos pistol, and this is because it can easily make head holes and feet holes with a few shots. Don't get me wrong, it's no bailiff, but still very handy to make in sort of big-ish holes around sight, which you'll find is very common with a lot of the sight setups. And lastly, for his gadget, I like to use proximity alarms. I feel like they're so much more useful than impacts. I place these usually above sort of stairs. I would recommend running impacts if you know they're gonna play Osa that round, so you can easily just get rid of her shields. Or if you wanna destroy the ace charges as ace is breaching walls. Now moving on to my next tip, which is placements. The placements for the my charges are very important. Typically, you do wanna be putting these on windows and doors. Uh, this just sort of slows down the attackers when they want to sort of enter a room or into sight. They're going to be throwing projectiles like smoke grenades, flash grenades, frags, and even some gadgets like yin candelas. So you want to be catching these out and slowing them down with their push. Now I said you need to place these on doors and windows, but it's also important to keep these hidden as well. You need to make sure they're not too exposed that the attackers will just be able to shoot them from say a different window. And another good thing to keep in mind when it comes to placements is you don't need to limit yourself just to doors and windows. Take cafe for example. If you're holding pixel in the piano room, you can place your mires behind the chairs and sofas. An advantage of doing this is that it captures any projectiles from any of the windows because it's in your general area. So yeah, don't just limit yourself to doors and windows and be sure to keep them hidden. Sometimes it's generally better to keep them more close to you. And this smoothly goes into our next tip, which is about map knowledge and game sense. Now, this isn't something you can learn overnight. You will, over time, just learn the sort of maps, how to set up sites and improve your game sense as well over time. But it's still a tip I definitely think is worth mentioning when you're playing an operator like Wamai. So I'm going to go into a bit of detail about map knowledge when it comes to Wamai. I'm going to use Cafe for example. I like to play Wamai downstairs when we're defending kitchen. And I usually sort of play in bakery. So I put two Wamais on the double door for bakery so I don't get flashed or fragged. What I also do is reinforce this wall to my right so they can't easily shoot me from a small bakery. And then I also put a Wamai on the small bakery window as well. So when we talk about map knowledge, why I'm doing this is because bakery is a common place to push. It gives them a lot of map control when they're attacking kitchen. It's very important to defend bakery or at least slow them down. So with my map knowledge and game sense, I know that they're gonna be pushing bakery and I'm gonna slow them down as much as possible. But another layer of the map knowledge and game sense with this is that I also know how they sort of counter this as well. Typically, they try and ace charge the wall so that they can clear me out from behind the counter. But what I do here is put one my charge on the window. The one my magnet actually catches the ace. So they start wasting ace charges on just clearing me out. And then hopefully they won't have any left to even breach the main wall. So that is what I mean when it comes to map knowledge and game sense. It's knowing where they're going to be pushing from, how to counter that, and keeping in mind the counters they have for you as well. So keeping this tip in mind, we move on to the next tip, which is about repositioning. Now let's say you set up all your my magnets on one side of the map because you suspect they'll be pushing from that side. Say like me of bakery, for example. Now 90% of the time, you might have been right, they will be pushing from there. But sometimes, some teams like to mix it up a little bit and push the side you don't really expect. So this is where repositioning comes in mind. Your my magnets aren't stuck to the ground, the ceiling, the walls, you can pick them up. So what I'd recommend doing, if you suspect they're pushing from the other side, say you get a call from your teammates that there are multiple pushing from a certain side of the map, or you see them on cams pushing a different way, that's when you should start thinking about, okay, let me get my gadgets and I'm gonna set them up for the other side. Now, you don't have to fully rotate to the other side of the map. Maybe just set your gadgets up on site where you suspect they'll be pushing from. Because repositioning is kind of risky because you've dedicated yourself to one side of the map, they're pushing from the other side, you're running out of time as well to get over there and then set up. And by that time that you're there, they're likely you've already got a little bit of map control. If you feel like you can set up properly on the other side, do it. 
but in most cases, you might be out of time already. So maybe just set up your gadgets on site or in the hallways, doors, windows, where you think they'll be pushing from. Quite a simple little tip, but just something to keep in mind. Now we move on to my final tip, which is about play style. This is a sort of general tip, yes I know, but it has to be mentioned because I see a lot of you thinking there's only one way to play this game. Everyone's got their own sort of play style and it's about finding what is yours. What do you work well in? What do you do best at? Take a look at myself, for example. I like to play with my out of sight. I like to be the fawn in the attacker's side that slows them down or just stops them from getting a certain part of the map. We take a look back at cafe. If we're holding kitchen, I'm gonna be playing bakery to stop them from getting that map control. Or we could take a look at coastline. If the site is hookah, or maybe it's even kitchen again, play VIP. VIP, another common sort of room to get hold of as an attacker. And I just like to slow them down from getting that map control or even just stop them completely. It's about what you do best at. I like to roam and I like to annoy the attackers, but I'm not gonna tell you that's the way you need to play with my. You don't have to play like that. You can anchor with him as well. And sometimes I even do that myself. If the roaming game isn't going very well, then I say, okay, I'm going to play more further back towards site and be a bit more reserved. So there's not one way to play this game. Anchoring with Amai is not a bad thing either. Like the attackers will always make that final push onto site. They're going to throw stuns. They're going to throw smokes, frag grenades. And with Wamai magnets on site, that's obviously going to prevent that and stop them from getting an easy plant down or just running onto site easily. So there's nothing wrong with anchoring with Wamai either. There's no certain way to play the game to play Wamai. These are just been my tips to help improve with Wamai. I have a bonus tip. Okay, we are not done yet. My bonus tip is to preserve your life. Okay, obviously I said I like to roam with Amai. I like to play a little bit more aggressive, but I also have to keep in mind that I'm gonna be useless if I die so early on because Wamai doesn't spawn in with his breach shot, his breach charges, his magnet charges. What am I even saying? His magnets, his Wamai charges, whatever you wanna call them. He doesn't spawn in with all of them. They are brought to him over time. So obviously if you're gonna die early, what was the point playing with Wamai? So value life over anything you're doing. And that is all for the bonus tip and that's all for the tips video to be fair. Hopefully this helps. If it does, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, do what you want. And I've been streaming a lot more on Twitch as well. Join me on Twitch and give me a little follow. I'd very much appreciate it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Yes. That's one of them. Yes. Oh, that's both. Go on. I've activated cheats. On my thing. Oh, he's on the nose! Bottom metal. Alright, bottom metal now. Come in. Oh, yeah, oh no, my god. Insane. The ace against the cheaters. You cheating. Bro, hi, YouTube. <laughs>